A hot summer's day in Yorkshire. I know. Even the sheep had to lie down. This video comes with a warning. What looks at first like a lovely walk through farmland and woods, in fact, is a story of abandoned industry. Welcome to the remains of Craven Limeworks in Langcliffe. Let's have a look at an old map courtesy of the National Library of Scotland. Here we can see the limeworks as it was when in operation. The lozenge shaped building is the Hoffman Kiln, built in 1873. Designed in Germany and built under license here in Lancliffe, it was a continuous burn kiln with 22 chambers. What does that mean? Well, here is a basic diagram which shows the continuous process that moved the fire around the circuit of the kiln, which would once have had removable partitions. Lime blocks were built up in the cool sections, where they would eventually be preheated by the heat from the adjacent chambers. The fire was managed with the use of dampers to adjust the airflow, and coal dust was poured through the holes in the ceiling at just the right amounts to feed the fire. There was no need to light the fire in the next chamber as long as the preheating allowed spontaneous combustion of the coal dust when it entered the chamber. The picture on this end gives a complete picture of what the kiln would have looked like once of a day. Partitions were moved along the circuit and dampers in the ventilation, which was drawn by the chimney that once stood in the centre, closed to make the fire move along. Chambers behind the fire were then left to cool until the lime could be shoveled into railway trucks on the rails either side of the kiln. A full circuit of the kiln will take around six weeks. Beautifully simple, but complex at the same time. It was a hot day when we were here, and it was lovely and cool inside the kiln. Completely opposite of what it was built for. You can see into the flue system here, which would have been connected to the chimney, and would have drawn the hot gases out of the kiln.
The arch chambers were lined with fire bricks, which periodically had to be replaced. Oh. For this section, you can see the bare wall and the layer of fire bricks. If we take another look at the map, you can see a rail track marked here with the subtle arrow. This would have supplied the lime to the kiln from the quarry face and passed through this tunnel under a waste heap. You can see here the extent of the quarry workings on the cliffside. A chimney that once stood in the centre of the kiln was to be ceremonially demolished in 1951, but it came down by itself the day before, without anyone to see it. New industrial units are being constructed on the site of the old railway sidings, so it continues its industrial story, albeit on a lot less manual and hazardous scale. Earlier kilns on the site include this one marked on the map. If we head up the old incline plane of one of the tramways, we come to the remains of the Spencer kiln. Not as much to see, but shows the progression of industry on the site. So why burn lime anyway? It's a process that dates back to the Roman times. Burning limestone or calcium carbonate produces quick lime or calcium oxide, which when mixed with water produces slaked lime or calcium hydroxide. This could then be added to the land to raise its pH and so improve its fertility. Slaked lime was also used in mortar for building. Back to the map again, and we see three circles marked. This is the earliest of the kilns on site, and is a triple drawn kiln. A much more familiar style that you see dotted around the countryside. It's a bit overgrown, but I could get to the entrance of this one. The site closed in 1931, reopening for a short spell between 1937 until 1939 when it closed permanently. Thank you for watching. See you next time.